Hey guys, how's it going? Today I'm gonna show you how to install a reverse camera in your car. Installing a reverse camera is a very easy process and you can easily do it by yourself with basic hand tools. A good reverse camera could be a life save in an emergency. So if you haven't already, you will think about installing one into your car after watching this video. I'm gonna explain everything you need to know on how to select the right camera for your car, what you have to look for, where can you buy one, and the correct way to install it. So let's get started. The first thing you want to consider when installing a reverse camera is the type of monitor you're going to use to see the rear view. Basically, there are three types. First, we have the dashboard monitors. You place the monitor on the dashboard so the rear view is almost on your eye level so you don't have to take your eyes off the road for too long. You can even set up multiple cameras into one of these monitors to get an all around view. As you can see, this takes up some space on the dashboard so this is not ideal for a small car as the monitor is obstructing a reasonable area of your front view and create a blind spot. And also, the monitor being visible to the outside brings up a safety issue as someone can break into your car and steal the monitor. So overall, this setup is ideal for larger vehicles like trucks and buses. Then we have the rear view mirror monitors. They have a built-in LCD screen inside, so when you put the car into reverse, the screen turns on and pick up a backup monitor. Installation for this is very simple. You just have to strap it over your existing mirror and connect the camera and there you have a nice and clean view. You can even buy a mirror like this that comes in a kit to completely replace a stock mirror. This is ideal for smaller cars as it doesn't take up extra space and there are plenty of extra options to choose from such as satellite navigation, bluetooth, auto dimming or even night vision. This particular one has a built-in dash cam so this can be real handy in case of an emergency so you're not alone in an accident. And best of all, the basic ones are really inexpensive so if you're looking for a cheap reverse camera you're definitely gonna check this out this is the best bang for the buck. Finally, we have in-dash monitors. For this, you need to have an aftermarket head unit that has a backup camera input. Unlike in a rear view mirror monitor, this gives you a large screen, so you have a better view when you're reversing. Once you decided which setup works for your car, then you need to pick the right camera. And there are three things to look for. The video quality, weaving angle, and the camera mount. Speaking about the video quality, basically there are two types of cameras. CMOS cameras and CCD cameras. CCD cameras generally have a better video quality than CMOS cameras. As long as you have 640x480 for the video resolution, you're good. Then the viewing angle. This means how wide your camera can see. If it is too narrow, then you'll have a blind spot. A good camera should have 130 to 180 degrees of viewing angle. Finally, the camera mount. You have a few options here. The butterfly mount, the box mount, and the vehicle specific mount are the most popular. The camera I'm going to install today is a vehicle specific camera made specifically for a Toyota Camry. The next question you may have is where to buy a good camera. You can buy a good reverse camera kit from spare part shops or from online shops like eBay or Amazon. This one here was purchased from an eBay auction for $7. Whichever camera you buy, pretty much any of them comes with these accessories. The camera itself, a video cable that connects the camera to the monitor, an interface cable, a power cable, a product manual and some screws. If you don't like messing with these wires, you can go for a wireless kit. But the cheap ones often have signal interference issues, so I prefer to use a wired kit. Once you get your reverse camera kit, the next thing is the installation. You screw the camera onto the boot lid and connect the camera to the interface cable. The interface cable splits into two cables, the video cable and the power cable. Video cable goes to the monitor in front and the power cable goes to the reverse lights. So the camera works only when the car is in reverse. It is a very simple setup, so let's begin the installation. First, we had to decide the position to install the camera. This car was available with an optional reverse camera, so we already had the mark out to begin with. Now we had to drill a hole right here to insert the mounting stud. Before we start drilling a hole, we had to remove this boot fabric out of the way to see what's behind. Now this panel is held in place by these little plastic clips, so you're gonna get a pick like this and pull out the clip. After removing all the clips, the panel will come right out. You want to look closely to see if anything gets in the way of your drilling. In this case, there's nothing so we are safe. Then you want to get a drill like this and a drill bit in similar size to the mounting stud. Easiest way to figure out the right size is to get a ruler or a vernier caliper like this and measure the thickness of the mounting stud and then find a drill bit that barely fits in the same size. You can even use the range for this.
First we had to place the double side tape that comes with the kit. Then we will drill the hole, feed the wiring, wiggle the camera into the hole and connect the camera to the interface cable. How easy is that? Now we had to locate the valve for the reverse lights and we're gonna take it out. We are going to connect the power cable to the reverse light wiring so the camera turns on every time the reverse lights are working. Remember, before you're gonna do any electrical work in your car, you're gonna take off the negative battery terminal so you wouldn't short out anything while you're working. Now we're gonna get a wire stripper like this, then you strip both wires. Simply put the wires on the jaws, squeeze on the trigger, there's the positive wire, there's the negative wire. Look how easy it is to do a job with the right tool. Then you get the power cable and strip the ends and connect the red cable to the live wire and the black cable to the ground wire and twist them around to a snug. Now we had to solder the connections together, so get a soldering iron and some solder. Here I'm using 6040 Rosinko solder, cause that gives me the best results. Once the tip is got hard, you wanna tin it with some solder, so it would solder better. Then you wanna heat up the wire. As the wire gets hard, you also wanna tin the wire with some solder to get a good start. Now it is time to solder the wires together. Place the tip under the wire and add solder to the top of the wire, so the solder will melt into the wire. Once you get both wires started, you want to check the voltage on the wires. So turn the key to the on position and put the key into reverse. Then you want to get a multimeter like this and test the voltage. You can also do that with a basic test light. We have a good reading here, so the soldering is good. Then we had to insert the bulb back in and secure the connections with some electrical tape. I'm also going to put a little bit of silicone paste on the connections. This will stop the moisture from getting in and corroding the wires in the future. You can also use some dielectric grease for this. Then we had to wrap both wires with some electrical tape. First, we had to decide the position to install the camera. To add extra protection, I'm going to use a heat gun to string the tape and make a really strong insulation. Then you want to connect the camera to the power cable. Now the camera is getting power when the car is in reverse. Now we have to connect the video cable to the head unit. So we had to take the head unit out, which is held in place by four bolts, two in the top and two on the bottom. So we had to take the center console out first. Take off the shift knob, pry the panel off and disconnect the electrical connections. There's one, two, three. Now the panel is free, so let's keep it aside. Then we had to take off these vents as well. So pry it off and disconnect the electrical connections. And keep it aside. Now we can see the bolts, so let's take them out real quick. That's one bolt. That's the second. Third. Fault and wiggle the head unit out. Then you want to find the video input for the camera, and there it is. Now we have to connect one end of the video cable into this. The video cable has a red wire. This activates the screen when you reverse, and this has to be connected to the back wire coming out from the head unit. So strip the red wire first. This time we have two open end wires, so we can use some heat shrink rather than electrical tape to protect the connections from shorting out. So you want to insert a little piece of heat shrink before you begin. Make sure you get the smallest diameter heat shrink that goes over the wire. If your heat shrink is too big, it won't shrink small enough for a snug fit. Twist the wires together, put some solder, apply some silicone paste, slip the heat shrink over the connection, and apply some heat. Now we have a nice and clean connection which is both safe and durable. Then we had to fish the cable through the dashboard and pull it out from the bottom so we can reinstall the dashboard.
The best way to hide cables in a car is to run the cables under door seals. Now you can take your time to do a clean job. Take out each door seal and tuck the cable in and put the panel back on. Once you get to the rear seats, you're gonna take out the seats by pulling it off the clips that hold the seat in place. Now we can pull the cable into the boot and run it through the cable organizer clips and connect to the interface cable that goes to the camera. Last but not least, we have to connect the other end of the red wire to the reverse lights so the screen turns on when the car is in reverse. Alright now we are done. Before you put the boot panel back on, we want to test the camera to see if it's working. All right, here comes the moment of truth. This is exciting. Oh boy, check that out. This is looking good. Now that's how you probably install a reverse camera in your car. Now we can install the boot panel back on. Just to sum up this video, I'm gonna compare this camera against a factory fitted camera come standard in the top of the range model. Sure, the factory fitted camera may have cool features like automatic parking lot detection and trajectory lines to indicate your turning. But this is more than good enough for a $7 camera. Thanks for checking out this video and remember I post new videos every week so if you want to learn more do it yourself videos like this, be sure to subscribe to the Junkie DIY Guy channel. All the tools I've used in this video are in the description down below so you can easily find them and I'll see you in the next one.